Indiana Jones and the Deadly Dose of Diversity, there's a new one for you, has bombed. The numbers are completely and totally pathetic, you know this, I know this. While Sound of Freedom, on the other hand, a movie that is wholly about protecting children from those who would seek to do more than just physical harm to them, is soaring. Yay, happy day, common sense prevails, I suppose. Of course, some of the media shills have been trying to attack Sound of Freedom, calling it things like QAnon, and uh, saying that it's some kind of attack on an imaginary cabal of super elite predators and blah, 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 blah. Of course, that has very little to do with defending Indiana Jones and much more to do with pushing a political narrative, especially the QAnon part, which itself could actually be, as was pointed out to me in the comments recently, a preemptive psyop to try to cover for something much more sinister but i digress of course as i am wont to do because it's not all the media who are actually trying to keep up the facade for any longer especially when it comes to lucasfilm some of them are basically now just having to finally admit that kathleen kennedy has done what we all knew she was going to do right from the very beginning and that is destroy every single franchise and every single creative property that George Lucas ever created. Smash the fans to bits, divide and conquer, and create no interest whatsoever in any of those properties, and do it all with a smile on her wicked, wicked face. Oh well, so much for The Force is female, but, you know, not all bad. Let's take a look at a particularly surprising shill website that seems to have come around at least in this case, to the ways of common sense. Hello, you legends. Welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. Hope you're having a lovely day. Hit the like button if you're enjoying it so far, or maybe wait till a little later, but do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to support me in my quest to rid the world of woke BS. Okay, let's go over to, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, Screen Rant. I know. Screen Rant. Like the last site anybody would expect to come out and actually attack Lucasfilm. There must be some ulterior motive. Can't for the life of me work out what it is. Maybe you can. Let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, Indiana Jones 5's $250 million box office letdown completes Lucasfilm's three franchise failure. From Screen Rant, a site that has vehemently defended The Last Jedi, took shots at absolutely everyone who has criticized Lucasfilm over the years as alt-right, racist, sexist, far-right, fascist, baggats. Well, I mean, if you can't beat us... <laughs> Anyway, Indiana Jones' 250 million box office haul signals growing frustration in how Disney and Lucasfilm handle their three most beloved franchises. Well, we've been saying this for... I mean, even though my channel's only been around for about a year and a little bit more than that, let's see, about five, six years now we've been saying this crap. Like, stop it, you're ruining everything. Ray sucks, she's a Mary Sue. Indiana Jones should not be cucked. Luke Skywalker should not be cucked. Hell, Nick Fury should not be cucked. On and on and on and on and on. All the way back to Ghostbusters 2016, Doctor Who's female regeneration and beyond, I suppose. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has made just under $250 million at the worldwide box office so far, and the disappointing haul has completed Lucasfilm's franchise failure with Disney. I mean, I can't believe I'm reading this from Screen Rant. I can't get over it. The potentially last Indiana Jones film, the, no, must absolutely be last at Indiana Jones film, pre premiered, rather, to a lukewarm reception, and the adventure series marks the third franchise revived and let down by Disney and Lucasfilm's collaboration. After Willow's cancellation and the continued struggles of Star Wars movies, Lucasfilm seems at a loss for what to do with its most beloved franchises. Did, did Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers write this or something? Continuing with Indiana Jones 5's box office bomb. From stalled productions to poor marketing, Lucasfilm and Disney together cannot find a profit in theatres, letting down their fans. Yes, that's all they've done for more than half a decade now. In the 1980s, Lucasfilm essentially created the blockbuster formula that audiences see today. Yes, Star Wars was the original blockbuster, not counting Gone with the Wind. The Star Wars uh, sequels, Indiana Jones and the fantasy film Willow, all premiered throughout... Wait, the initial Star Wars sequels? What? No, the OT. Indiana Jones and the fantasy film Willow all premiered through the 80s and created loyal fan bases who are highly protective of these franchises. Yes, we are, because apparently no one else is willing to try. 
Disney acquired Lucasfilm in 2012 and the deal intrigued fans due to the divisive Star Wars prequels that don't seem so divisive anymore, and the fourth Indiana Jones movie that was, yeah, pretty damn terrible. Yet after a promising entry in The Force Awakens, promising until you actually think about it, Lucasfilm has been plagued by cancelled Star Wars projects, stalled productions, and final sequels criticised by fans for ruining Lucasfilm's original legacy. Yes, because they did. They fly now, they fly now. Let's punch Indiana Jones in the face. Let's make Willow the TV show all about a couple of lesbians. Oh boy, I need to blow my nose. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has grossed just shy of $250 million against a reported 295. That's really lowballing it. Indiana Jones 5, no chance in hell that it cost under $300 million. Much more likely 330, 340, 350. We'll find out next year when the tax returns come back. No way, no way is this under 300 million. Which of course, as I always state, double it for, uh, for, for marketing and add a little more for production costs, uh, distribution costs, then take about an average of 30 to 40% off for global uh, rental costs and returns that actually come back to Disney or Lucasfilm based on it. And you're looking at around about nowhere near breaking even, let's just say that. Yet the film would have to make at least twice its budget to break even. Indiana Jones' disappointing box office signals a trend for other Lucasfilm properties. What other Lucasfilm properties? There's none left. They've all been destroyed. And their reputation over the past few years. 2018 solo bomb. The rise of... Uh, this is still screen ran. The rise of Skywalker's $1 billion box office was disappointing due to a lower box office draw and reception compared to its predecessors, and in 2023, Lucasfilm's Widow Willow series was cancelled after one season and, by the way, removed from the platform. Each franchise plagued by individual troubles, blah, blah, blah. After seven years in production, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was marketed as Harrison Ford's final ride as the title character. This means its box office failure may not be as damaging due to, uh, its, to its future, since Indiana Jones 6 happening was unlikely, but Lucasfilm would surely have had hopes for more from the series. Yes, they definitely wanted to make Helena Shaw a thing. Stop trying to make Phoebe Waller-Bridge a thing. She is not going to be a thing. Okay? She is not. Just like Simu Lu is not going to be a thing. Okay? It just doesn't work that way. Audiences decide who's going to be a thing. And it ain't them. Alright? Not happening. Give up. Give up forever. Please. For God's sake. Similarly, Willow will not see a new entry soon, and blah blah blah. One such film met on the docket is a new Star Wars movie supposedly coming on the horizon by James Mangold. But it will be interesting to see whether the latter has any impact on the former, i.e. is James Mangold done? He cannot do these kinds of films. He's very good when it comes to Ford versus Ferrari, and Logan was good. But Logan is okay to turn into a, a wizened old bitter man because he's already a bitter, very bitter, and already quite old man, despite the way he looks. Ultimately, the overall message from audiences is without a clear vision or purpose, Lucasfilm should leave these movies alone. Honestly, it's almost impossible to believe it. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, honestly, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would not believe that Screen Rant of all sites has just come out and said that the Indiana Jones 5's bomb, the letdown, has completed the unholy trilogy of Lucasfilm franchise destruction. But that's where we're at these days. It's in deniable. It is inevitable. It is impossible to ignore. Lucasfilm has had a decade of total and utter destitution, destruction. It is a disaster. Nothing they do will make any money going forward. Bet. Anyway, let me know what you think about all this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you have enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel as well, as I continue to try to grow into the future. If you'd like to see some more of me, then I'd like to see some more of you. Speaking of which, I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, see you next time.